Being happy with what you have. It's one of the hardest mental roadblocks we experience in our lives due to our natural desire to always want more. We need that one too. And that one. <sighs> now this desire is not a bad mentality, but there can be moments where it leads to one getting carried away and losing sight of the big picture. <gasps> we lost Kim Jim! Which is shown in one of the most fun ways in the episode Cubby. I once heard someone describe that Bluey episodes usually fall into three categories of emotional, Au revoir, Bluey. life lesson, sometimes special people come into our lives, stay for a bit, and then they have to go, or just plain fun. And while I believe all episodes are a mix of these three, the episode Cubby is definitely one of the most fun episodes I've seen in the show, but as we know, even the most fun episodes tell a story. I've started talking about Bluey due to my history of working with kids in a therapeutic setting, which has inspired me to start this series. In this video, we will be deep diving into Cubby as they explore the ever important topic of being grateful for what you have, as well as exploring the multitude of Easter eggs clustered around these scenes. This place is nuts! But before we get into the sheets and cushions of the video, <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You have no idea how much helps me out to get these videos out to more fans like you. And let's start building our way into Cubby. Hmm, there's not room for Kim Jim to sleep. It's already big enough, babe. It's not. It's too cramped. Whoa. Where's Kim Jim? Huh? I thought he was with you. Who's Kim Jim? He's our child. But we've lost him. We're both TV is big enough. So is this room. Look at it. Free. I don't know what I was thinking. This episode starts with Bluey and Bingo playing snakes and ladders with their stuffed animal Kim Jim, as the two imitate being his parents and suggest that he goes no, to bed. It's time for your nap, young man. Now immediately we can already see the conflict starting to unfold as they look around and realize that they don't have a bedroom built for him. In the same vein, Bandit and Chili also expresses their own desire for wanting what they don't have, where Bandit wishes for his TV, TV. to be bigger, while Chili wishes the room was bigger. It's already big enough, babe. It's not. It's too cramped. Cleverly foreshadowing the hijinks that are about to transpire. Now that the stage is set, as Chili looks to measure the room by leaving to find a tape measure, huh? the kids force Bandit to inch closer and closer to the TV as they gather materials to start expanding on their cubby for Kim Jim, eventually revealing the yes slash no button from yes, dance mode. Yes, yes, yes. As the episode progresses, they get more and more household items to make more rooms for the plushie, acting as little architects. And funnily enough, when the studio wrote this episode, Bandit was originally going to be an architect in this episode where he was tasked to continuously expand the rooms instead of the girls. I'm pretty happy they chose to do the episode in the way they did because we get a ton of funny moments with Bandit later on. Oh man, I can't deal with this. But for now, we get to witness Bluey literally stealing the seat from under him, which always makes me laugh seeing Bandit's surprise expression. Throughout this process, we can examine how Bluey in Bingo's game causes slight inconveniences to the parents, where Bandit has to give up where he is sitting to allow his kids to keep building. Oh, can't you build around me? And also preventing Chili from properly measuring the room which is an excellent way to showcase how getting hyper fixated on your own goals can sometimes blind you from seeing everything else around you. For Chili's case, her hyperfixation on measuring the house causes her to bump into the children's fort. Bandit becomes super focused on the cricket game and doesn't notice the giant cubby behind him before it's too late. Whoa. And in the kids' case, their focus on building new rooms causes them to eventually lose sight on why they began the process in the first place, which will become more clear as we get closer to the climax. Now, I never noticed this painting in the house before, but as Chili tape measures this corner, we can see Bandit, Stripe, and Uncle Radley playing, or maybe roughhousing, and thanks to some Twitter users, I'm now aware that this painting is in about four different episodes, but I remember seeing this picture and thinking how cute it was to see all of them young playing together, but then I noticed they all have their tiny little gray hairs, so it's awesome to see them as adults still playing like kids after so many years with Stripe still being the one at the bottom. <laughs> 
As Bluey and Bingo continue their imaginative play as parents to Kim Jim, we can see them transition over to their new dining room, with Bingo eating her favorite food for imaginative play, canned beans, I slipped on my beans. They decide to make even more rooms. Eventually, this leads to the kids building this massive pillow fort with about 20 plus different rooms they presumably need for their plushie, can't have a house without a kitchen, causing the entire room to become cramped. And cleverly, the writers use this cramped room to allow everyone in the house to learn the lesson of the episode, but in their own unique way, some being a lot more subtle than others. Now one thing that the Bluey team is now doing to accompany these new episodes is also making some behind the scenes information dumps in the form of a podcast where you get to hear individual members of the team talk about the creative process as well as their own thoughts during the process of creating these. I really think it's worth a listen because I remember listening to it and hearing Joe Brum, the creator of Bluey, saying how joyful it is to watch his crew work, which really put a big smile on my face. It's just really wholesome and informative in general. However, just like this episode, it's currently an Australian exclusive piece of content, unless you have a way to bypass this restriction, which is why I'm happy to share the sponsor of this video, Atlas VPN. Now it's extremely easy to use, all you need to do is just press one button and you're connected to Australian servers and then you're easily able to access all these pieces of content through the ABC website. This is the best VPN deal in the market, it easily stops ads and malware. You are able to save some coin while shopping online with this. It protects an unlimited amount of devices. It keeps all your Google searches in private and I'll be posting a link in the description of this video so you can easily get to the podcast there and right next to it there will also be a link to get the exclusive offer, $1.83 per month plus three extra months for free, and of course a 30 day money back guarantee. As mentioned before, the room slowly gets more and more cramped, serving as a nice contradiction to what Chili said earlier when the room was normal. It's too cramped! And as we watch the time speed on forward, we cut back to Bandit, now having his nose being pushed up to the TV. He gets up oh, needing to use the toilet. toilet in which we can see him finally notice what has been going around him. It's at this point the episode comes to its all time high where Bandit asks the kids, Well how am I gonna get to the toilet? And we can hear the absurdity of their house's layout. Head to the dining room. Then go past the alpaca farm, around the cactus garden, through the star room, and out the netball court. Oh, right. Now, due to the enormous amount of Easter eggs we are about to witness in these coming scenes, I would love to focus on the narrative as well as the cool mix of musical composition and come back to the bulk of the Easter eggs as well as the ones I didn't point out earlier. So let's join Bandit as he heads into the cubby. All right. Here we go. An incredible thing we can hear if we listen closely as we explore each room is the way that the two musical composers, Joff and Joseph, adds subtle changes to the music to match the theme of each room. For example, as Bandit enters the kids' disco room, they add this light, whimsical noise. The Panga Room has more of a frosty feel, Bingo's Library has a classical vibe, and the Observery adds a nighttime slash space flare to the chords. Eventually, Bandit bumps into Chili, asking desperately, How do I get out of here? And somehow, Chili seems to know where to go, but before he heads out, she asks him to take the tape measure with him. Ugh, right eye. It's here as Bluey completes the final room of the cubby that she expresses how excited she is to show Kim Jimin, and it calls for Bingo, asking where she is. And the main conflict starts to unfold as Bluey showcases her confusion on the new room, as well as both of them asking where Kim Jim is within this labyrinth they created. <gasps> we lost Kim Jim! As the music picks up, the two start bolting from room to room, calling for Kim Jim everywhere they go, eventually hitting into Bandit. What are you doing? These next two scenes never fail to make me laugh as they express how they can't find Kim Jim to a very confused Bandit. Who's Kim Jim? And how frantic the girls get over not being good parents. <laughs> Oh man, I can't deal with this. Bandit also expresses his own frantic mission of needing to find the toilet no, to the kids, girls. Where is the toilet? And as it seems like Bandit is about to reach his goal, this happens. I'm in the real toilet! I don't know if it's like the comedic timing or if it's the way the music stops, but I find it hilarious hearing Bandit express his frustration about the fight toilet. Eventually the girls run from room to room looking everywhere they can think of, leading Bingo into the star room as she states there's too many rooms. 
making it impossible to find Kim Jim. Bluey and Bingo started this journey to essentially make life better for their child Kim Jim, but in the process they got so focused on their desire to always have more for him instead of being happy for what they have already that they lost sight of their original purpose and somehow lost Kim Jim. What's Kim Jim? However, not all is lost as Bandit reaches the tape measure that has already been deployed and realizes that he's going, going around in circles. circles as he hears the cricket game come back on and this happens. Sorry kids, I'm just gonna take a little peek. Oops. What's that noise? Oh no. Copy collapse! <laughs> 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 Leaving this ginormous mess all around the room, but most importantly, allowing the kids to finally find Kim Jim. And as the scene fades away, we can notice the room is back to how it used to be without all the clutter, with everyone now smiling. And we get to witness a bandit accepting the size of his TV. You know what? This TV is big enough. Chili accepting the size of her living room. I don't know what I was thinking. And also Bluey and Bingo accepting the size of their play space showing how everyone is now grateful for what they have. Do you kids need more room? No, we're fine. Bluey and Bingo becoming grateful for what they have is the easiest thing to identify within this episode, since they are primarily the main focus, but I would love to briefly explain what made Chili and Bandit become grateful in the moment as well, in case you haven't picked up on it already, since it's decently subtle and it's all because of the way the cubbies altered the room. Chili's desire was to get a way to make the room bigger due to her feeling it was too cramped. It's not until she grabs her tape measure and starts trying to carefully measure the room that she gets interrupted time and time again by the girl's game, whether it's them running into her due to limited space or her bumping into the fort. Hey, mind the towel cupboard. Sorry. She has a very difficult time in general from the room now actually being cramped from the game. Once the forts all topple over, you can see her glance around the room with a slight realization in her eyes. Originally I had thought this was to show that she didn't notice the forts in the first place, but we know that she was able to direct Bandit to where the bathroom was in the maze, Keep heading that way. showing that she was well aware of them and even knew the layout somehow. So instead, I feel the way that they use her eyes in the scene was to subtly show her realizing how big the room actually was once the clutter was cleared. Now for Bandit's case, all he really wanted was for the TV to be bigger. It's huge. It's not. In a similar way to how Chili's realization happened, Bandit gets interrupted watching Cricket by the children causing him to inch closer and closer to the TV. Eventually the TV screen that seems so small is seen in a different perspective as Bandit's face is squished up against the screen. There isn't a sudden look of realization in the same way as Chili, but I would imagine the TV literally being right on his nose would make Bandit realize how big the TV actually is, since at this point it's bigger than his entire body. And I slightly touched on it earlier, but I loved how the animators purposely showed everyone smiling near the end. It's a great way to showcase how feeling grateful can help people feel more positive emotions. Now at this point, I'm going to try my best to show all the Easter eggs I didn't mention in this episode. There is a crazy amount of them, so I won't be surprised if I miss some, but before we get to them, if you feel like the Healer family became grateful for what they have in a different way, I would love to hear it. In one interview, they stated that lots of messages are left ambiguous in many episodes to encourage us to create our own ideas, so feel free to tell me your thoughts down below. We are going to go through a ton of easter eggs in this episode. I might be going a little fast because there's just so many to cover, but let's just get right into it. Here we go! In every episode, there is a recurring easter egg of a long dog, and this one has three. There's one at the first cubby room Bandit enters, there's a long dog at the end where everything is collapsed, and you can also see the recurring easter egg of a pineapple in the background here as well, and the books from Unicorns right over here. What are we reading? Well, it's a story. God! Just a few moments later, when they find Kim Jim, you can see a golden long dog here. Grey Dancer can be spotted in the second cubby bandit by Prasses. Grey Dancer. And a green octopus, which is the same model as the purple octopus in Hospital, which I never understood why they changed the color of it in later episodes, but whatever. While the third cubby, you can see the queen doll, oh, the teddies from Sleepover, coconuts have water in them. 
In near one of the last cubbies, you can see the crocodile from the episode Doctor. There's various gnomes that are spotted around the rooms that we occasionally see in other episodes. There's wind up bath toys when Chili bumps into the cubby from the episode Burger Shop. Right here, we can see the playhouse from Rain and around it there are three plushies that are a fox, a koala, and an owl, which are seen in a lot of episodes, but you can see them all in one place in the episode Queens. Also in the same queen screenshot I'm showing here, we can see a penguin plushie, which is used in the ice room. When the cubbies are shown zoomed out, you can also see a hat that looks very similar to Agatha's hat from Driving. She scratched out my cousin. I told you I would. And there's a reoccurring tennis ball easter egg on the pole here. When the fort is collapsing, you can see Chuckney Chimp right at the start. Chuckney Chimp special! Chatter Max comes bursting through as well as the sushi doll from the weekend episode. And you can even see the star wand that they use in Chicken Rat. They turn dad into a chicken rat! And you can also see glow in the dark stars here that are from their room. Now I'm 99% confident that there's some toys I did not reference and I know for a fact that there's some stuff that I missed since on the wiki it says there's cards that they played in obstacle course but I couldn't find them. During the cricket game the umpire says Nearly went for the second run there but the call was stay, the batsman obeyed. Being a cute dog command reference, in the disco pool scene it's a reference to the hot tub time machine movie. And if you look closely near the tea towel in this scene, there's a sticker of the big peanut. The entire fort scene is a reference to a sitcom show called Community where they made Fluffy Town. The tape measure band it carries also strike me as a reference to a old Greek mythology story of the Minotaur and how the hero used a rope to help traverse the confusing maze in case he starts going, going around in circles. in circles. Now, I'm sure someone on the team is as big as a Greek nerd as I am, so maybe that was intentional. But something really interesting is if you listen to the podcast, they mentioned that the entire plot was heavily inspired by the book A Squash in a Squeeze, which depicts a very similar scenario where the lady is upset with how small her room is and eventually gets filled with things, in this case, animals, and once they get it all removed, she sees how big the room actually was. It is big enough. So is this room. And becomes grateful for what she has. That's going to be it for the Easter eggs, but please tell me down below if I miss anything. I'm really curious to hear what you buddies find. This episode really is fantastic. It has tons of funny scenes, tons of Easter eggs, subtle storytelling that is inspired by an old tale but told in a way that is unique, and most of all, an important message to teach. It's really hard to not say that this episode is one of my favorites, especially after analyzing it because of how fun it is to watch and rewatch, seeing as you can notice so many different things every time you look at it. But of course, favorite episodes is a topic for an entirely different video. If you haven't seen the episode, yet I highly recommend checking it out and if you can't because of not being in Australia then of course you can always try Atlas VPN by clicking the link down below but at this point I wanted to share something that has happened recently that caused me to get <laughs> quite emotional and it all has to do with a recent milestone that the channel has reached which of course is hitting 18,000 subs. I am eternally grateful for everyone constantly supporting me and giving me this um overwhelming motivation to keep making these videos and when I hit 18k I got a total of five different pieces of art to celebrate this. It really just takes one piece of fan art to get me emotional because I never imagined I would get a single drawing for my content so when I get five <laughs> you can imagine how it would make me feel. Just talking about it makes me want to tear up honestly, so I'm just going to show the art on the screen here. As in tradition, their Twitter handles will be on the bottom left, and this first one is from Leaf. Now, Leaf has this amazing art style that's like almost simplistic, and they always choose these like fantastic bright colors. I'm not sure how to fully describe it, but I've always been a big fan of his art style. Next one is from Biscuit with a new set of glasses from my OC, which I really, really like. I, I, I love when I see different people do different things with my glasses with a a nice colorful rainbow being reflective on the coat of Pugly there. Next we have Juka. Now Juka has this really cute art style that is really appealing to me. I'm not really sure how to describe it. My brain wants to say it's chibi but I know that's not right. El Wow Wow has my character here being drawn kind of purposely chunky which I really enjoyed looking at. 
because you don't see that too too often with bluey art and these awesome paw prints in the background and finally the last one is from the ever talented jonah now what i really love about jonah is like every time he draws someone's oc you can see regular art on the left and usually there's like the escape art which is like kind of more like cartoony in the bottom right and a lot of his drawings of other people's oc and i just really love him holding a script in his hand i think that's so so cute <laughs> my character going hey 18k subs all these artists are different ones that i've been following on twitter so it feels incredible to see them celebrate my milestone with me since i really love each of their art styles in different ways all of their Twitter pages will be linked down below, so definitely check them out. I can't thank you enough for you all <laughs> constantly giving me these good vibes, and please join me in the future as we deep dive into more episodes, so don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss it for any episode I make. But for now, let's continue the art train by showcasing the art that was sent to me by more talented artists within the Bluey community. First one here is honestly like a masterpiece. I'm not even sure how to like fully express it in like 10, 20 seconds, but this is from the artist Mackie. He has this amazing contrast between the episode Granddad as well as Fairy Tale. I never really made the connection of the two scenes of the parent and child looking off into the distance, but it's incredible that the artist captured that and never noticed that before. And the lighting in both of the scenes are just peak. Speaking of lighting, the next piece has a really bright and happy lighting. It of course being a reference to the episode Cafe with Fido and Bandit of course hanging out like friends and Winnie and Bluey hanging out as well. So Wowie has always been one of my more favorite artists because of the way he draws his characters as well as the background but this particular piece is really stunning in my opinion so I really really enjoyed seeing this one which makes it extra special that I get to showcase it here and this next one is just amazing for me because it's it's me next to like back and back to bb productions which everyone that's watched my videos should already know who he is he is i would consider the biggest bluey content creator i know ozzy girl margie is one is the biggest technically subscriber count but bb production is someone i really inspire and look to when starting my bluey content just seeing me back to back on him was just <laughs> <laughs> a real treat to see. I really appreciate the artists, Mackie, Wowie, as well as Biscuit for sending me their art. They are all really incredible artists, so make sure to check them out down below. And if you want to send me your art, please send me a direct message on my Twitter here. Thank you everyone for constantly supporting me recently. You have no idea how much it means to me, especially the members who are supporting me as little as five dollary bucks a month to help me eventually become full-time, which are Clairvoyance, Rick and Glacius, Cameron, Zach, and Christian. And you can also become a member by clicking the link on the top right or in the comments or description. You have no idea how much it helps me out. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I hope y'all have a great day. <laughs> Bye-bye. And the last shall be First to immerse in a pass out heat Facing a mob with a moxie melt Till he woke up drowning in tchotchke hell More in a cave with a torch on a wall Than a window arrangement of porcelain dolls